you know. <laughs> Welcome to Change Your Live, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Happy Thursday, happy Thursday, happy Thursday to everybody. Tonight we got an awesome show planned for you guys. Tonight we'll be talking about having skin in the game. Having skin in the game. We'll get started. I want to say what's up to my awesome producer, DJ Lab. What's going on, brother? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Hey, hey, hey. What's going on, brother? You doing all right? Hey, man, I'm good. Lab, see, see y'all don't get to see. Lab is a magician. Lab about working the boys with the cameras and everything. You know, we shout out to my, my sister Joni. She should be back, you know, she's on the road of recovery. You know, Joni will be working the, the Facebook camera and the boys there and everything, but in her absence, Lab been doing uh 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 all that the production and everything and engineering with the boys, make sure the sound is awesome and everything, you know. So listen. Hey, you're a bad man. You're a bad man and everything. So Thank you. I ain't mean to throw my brother off with that and everything. And again, like I said, tonight we'll be talking about having skin in the game. It's a real good show we got planned for you guys and everything. And, uh, you know, if before we start everything off, you know, I, I always rehash my previous week, which I had an awesome um, previous seven days. I do want to remind everybody what started off. We kicked off our Finance 101, Business 101 financial series video. The first video we put out was break-even analysis. What is a break-even analysis? So um, if you get a chance to go on the YouTube channel, if you haven't, make sure you subscribe to it. You'll see that video on there. We'll be, uh, we were talking about uh, the break-even analysis and how it should be used in business. Uh, and with most of the class that we'll be doing with the finance series, I have a board there with a couple of formulas and a couple of problems worked out so you can get a chance to see it. So we did get a chance to kick off the uh business slash finance one-on-one ser- video series and stuff so please go to the youtube channel and check that out also uh, this saturday coming up september 7th at 11:50 a.m my uh, now you gamecock uh uh panhandle gamecock gamecocks will be playing our first uh football game so if you ain't doing that this saturday come out of panhandle park in jonesboro right by lovejoy i'm gonna be playing out there like i said again at 11:50 or 12 o'clock so you just come out that Saturday to help uh, support my kids. On this uh, Tuesday, was that Tuesday? Yeah, Tuesday, I was on uh, Dr. Renee Sunday's. Oh, my God, I forgot the young lady's name of her show. She interviewed me. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, all right. We'll, we'll figure it out. Man, what day was that? Tuesday, was it Tuesday? I think it was Tuesday. It was a, it was a weekly podcast. It was a podcast, but I, we did an interview. I think that she said it will be posted because, you know, we do a straight podcast. This is a live stream. This show how super we are. You know, we moving on the fly. You know, with a podcast, you know, they're usually recorded, go back, do the editing, add the snippets from the, sp- the sponsors, the commercials, and stuff like that. But not, now we're live streaming. So what you see is what you get. Yeah. But anyway, we did the uh, the recording for that. It was, it was Tuesday or yesterday? I don't think it was yesterday. I think it was Tuesday. But uh, it was a real good show. We talked about uh, business, finance. Uh, she's based out of Florida. And everything, but uh, it was a real good interview. Point about an hour long, hour and a half long, and stuff. We t- had a um, talk uh, real in depth about you know entrepreneurship and finance and everything. But uh, as soon as I get the details about that interview, you know, it was Dr. Renee Sunday. What's the name of her show? It'll come to me. I hope. Uh, <laughs> somebody <laughs> may not. Somebody may not get you. another invitation. <laughs> It'll come to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was on her show last week. It was pretty cool, and um. Uh, that went that went real well. She said probably Monday, they will have all the editing and everything done. They get ready to post it, but I'll make sure I fill everybody in on that. Um, today went pretty cool. Uh, I reached an agreement with uh, Clayton County with uh, giving like a business and finance uh, workshop series. Okay. You know, I got a uh, we'll get all the formalities out of the way within the next week or so. Probably hopefully start in October. So I'll be doing a big promo for you guys. I'll be doing it at the Aquatic Center by the jail. So if you're familiar with the aquatic center, great. If you're familiar with the jail, hey, that's cool too. But uh, <laughs> you know where I'll be. But yeah, I'll be doing that probably starting the month of August. It'll be like a quarterly series. I'll be giving classes on business, you know, entrepreneurship, and also classes on, you know, finance one on one and everything. So I'll be doing a real big promo, um, you know, prior to you know get a good build out for that. So if you do have any questions about entrepreneurship or finance, I want you guys to make sure. You come out to that class, but it will be probably starting in October. Um, with that, you know, so we, we hashed that out today. Um, also, the courses are coming. We're going to have the courses, the ebooks, and everything coming. I'm 
I'm hammering it out, y'all. Hammering it out. Trying to have everything ready by October and everything. So we're just trying to get everything hammered out. That, the uh, tax business classes, the entrepreneurship classes, some of the specified entrepreneurship classes with, you know, how to start a tax business, how to start a loan service, how to start a security company, different things that I've had my finger in over the years to give you guys a, a blueprint on how to do it and everything because you got so many people out here that are actually working in industries but they really don't know how to start a business in industry you okay. know and everything so we got that coming down the pipe so i'm really excited about that but I, it's a it's a lot of work getting that stuff created you That's know true. and everything so and i know you guys know i'm a bad man but whew, bad, <laughs> bad men get tired too right but um going back to tonight's show again we'll be talking about having skin in the game that's what we'll be discussing tonight. And when you hear the term having skin in the game, what we, my definition is have make sure people have some kind of risk, you know, be it, you know, money, time, their value or property, uh, in achieving a goal. You know, when, when people want to achieve something, they got some kind of sacrifice that they're putting up, you know, in order to achieve that goal. And a lot of times people are able to, you know, jump on a bandwagon or, or ride the wave and uh, make certain accomplishments or get uh, uh, associated with certain accomplishments and they had nothing to do with it. They had, they were by association dealing with it, but not by, you know, action or efforts and everything. So that's what we want to talk about tonight about having a uh, skin in the game and everything. Um, when you hear the term having skin in the game, you got a lot of different things may come to mind. Y'all got to excuse me. I got a little dry mouth today. I was about to just leave my son's uh, JV game out there yelling a little bit. But when you hear the, the term having skin in the game, I personally think about a lot of times where I put myself in situations with people and given a commitment to help certain people, and they – gave me their commitment they would you know along the way out you know with my help you know they were, they were willing to do it and as time go by their help or commitment kind of disappears and a lot of times when you know when you, you get swanted in with folks you say hey man i'm helping get this job i'm helping get this stuff started get it created people are all in mm-hmm. but usually when it start coming to the back to the, to the actual commitment that they gotta have <laughs> you know, that's when we start finding out really and truly, they, like I said, do they have any kind of skin in the game? Because you can make a deal with a person and say, hey, lab, look, we're going to go in, we're going to buy this equipment, get the studio off the ground and everything, and everybody's all in, everybody's excited and everything. But then when you, people start seeing the actual commitment, time, and the sacrifice to come in and get that stuff in, like, man, look, bro, I got something to do, man. I mean, look, you know, we ain't really making no money on that right now. I got to make my money over here. But we like, look, now nah, we all agreed to do this. We knew it was going to be slow starting off. We knew what kind of uh, sacrifice we are going to make to get this stuff out of the ground. And folks started disappearing. Yep. And generally happens. A- absolutely, absolutely. And a lot of times um, it's kind of hard to keep people locked in with something when people uh, don't necessarily have some kind of uh, sacrifice they've made. Like I said, again, we talk about your time, your money, your value, property, and you haven't put anything up. You know, it's easy to kind of just let it slide by, let it slide by, walk away, and everything. And I think you know, uh, I I I kind of like like with my uh, me being a, a red coach for eighteen years. Mm-hmm. To give you an example, so if this bothers anybody and you don't happen to you, it's the damn truth. <laughs> 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 you know, like what happens a lot of times. You know, the counties. They give uh, waivers. Just say sometimes income stuff happens. You know, say you had a tragedy or kind of, you know, going through something and everything, which is cool. I think it's great because the county has by far so much money. They don't need all that anyway. Right. So now sometimes, you know, it comes up that, hey, you know, we may need a little assistance. Right. And I'm just saying I've known that a lot of times when you stick your neck out for people, say, hey, look, you know, we need some some assistance, and I'd be like, "What can you do?" Uh-huh. Not, we just cover the whole damn thing. Give right. me something. Right. And when you don't have people have no kind of skin in the game, I've had. I'm just, this is the God honest truth. Just say out of almost twenty years, I've been coaching. Probably done did it probably about twenty, thirty times. You know, so not a lot, but you done did it at least at least five times, two or three times a year. I'm sorry, five, two or three times a year. Anyway, uh. 
you had them instances where you sticking those out, tell somebody, hey, look, we know we need to get this waiver. And because they ain't put no money into it, maybe a week too later, they just quit. Right. And these folks just came to you and saying that, look, we need some help, we need some assistance and all that kind of stuff. You go to the, the, the directors and all that, hey, look, I got a family, hey, this, that, and that. You know, I look, you know, well, they don't necessarily qualify, they're good people, you know, just they're going through a little something. Right. Okay, cool, because you, Coach Burden, we'll let you, uh, we'll give them a waiver. Be out there a damn week or two and quit. Yeah. <laughs> a week or two and quit. That shot me three damn times this year. Really? Three damn times, record. Wow. Record. Record. And I don't care. I mean, I'm favorable for him some of them. But y'all know what the hell y'all did. <laughs> he say he don't want to play. The hell he know. Exactly. Did he know that I just sat there and stuck my neck out for something? You know, did he, you know? Right. And like I tell you, for a lot of time, the kids, they want to play. They don't want to practice. That's what it is. They want They always want to be on the field and get that excitement of the adrenaline of playing. Yeah. But just think about it. Why was it so easy for a parent to let the kid quit? Because they don't want to come out there all the time. Yeah. They, they, they don't want to put no skin, no skin in the game. Hey. They don't want to come to practice after work and all that stuff and have to come to these games after work or on the weekends when they only got one day off a week. Well, That kind of stuff usually generally what's happening because you got to put effort in too. Even though your kid is the one playing the game, your kid can't drive itself. Well, yeah. what, but even with that though, Lab, I don't think none of them want to come to practice. Oh, okay. None of the parents. Oh, okay. The, what I'm talking about walking away, what make it easy to walk away? Because their ass ain't paid no money. Money. Oh, That's what it is. Oh, okay. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I don't okay. think none of the parents want I think all the parents, if they can go home and drink the wine and watch Scandal or right. Real Housewives, I think all my moms will be at home, you know. Right. But because they don't pay their damn money, bought these shoes and registration, they'll probably put about two or $300 in. Oh, boy, you're going to play. But when you ain't did nothing, it ain't sh- the walk away. Right. When the you see what I'm saying? You ain't spent no money. I got you. I got you. Just like when you like have somebody who lives with you and you trying to help them out to uh, you know, get on their feet. They might not, you know, they might not pay uh, no bills or nothing. Then you'd be like, man, this life's about to get cut off. And they'd be like, well, what you going to do? What you going to do? They oh, not worried about it. Oh, walk out your house, go oh, somebody oh, else where the, the light is working. <laughs> There's no kind of uh, uh, no tie, no kind of commitment. I right. say again, having skin in the game, and I think you know, reason why you start me thinking about this show is just thinking about the times over my life, you know, that how I've been burned because I actually gave people assistance, mm-hmm. and I see it happen to other people, and you just come to that whole thing, man. Look, you gotta have made for that skin in the game. That's probably one of the things that, as I've gotten older, I've pushed more and more. Like, mm-hmm. I do a, you know, man, you know, I do a whole lot of philanthropic and volunteer work in the community and all that kind of stuff but i don't went from a whole lot of changes where everybody know how we was bmu getting them damn turkeys out and all that kind of right, stuff right and it was my bright idea to stop it and start <laughs> finding <laughs> start finding you know uh, specified groups to give them to because i seen the damn people taking the damn getting out the cars five at a time getting the turkeys that we done just bought Going and selling them, or just you know what I'm saying. Right. So that was oh, so. If y'all ever have idea, it was it was Pooch's idea. It was, <laughs> it was Pooch's <laughs> idea. That why I was like, man, folk, I have skin in the game. Right. You know, right. seriously, man, seriously. I'm, I'm I'm just saying, like that was that was a, a a classic. That Christmas, I don't mind you, man. I'm a giving brother. Right. I don't gave one. I don't spent thousands of dollars. You know, and I know collectively, we talking about over the years. With, with just buying stuff, giving it away. Me and my brothers, we spend a lot of change out there because mm-hmm. we want kids to have stuff and everything. But I just, people do it. Do the vast majority do something uh, shady? No, absolutely no, not. Nah. But it's a damn enough. It's enough to spoil the bunch. Yeah. Right. Enough to piss me off, change my whole damn way I do things. <laughs> so I tell you that. But that was, like I said, again, that was one thing I pushed. Man, we got to have skin in the game. You know, and everything. And that was the thing about it. Well, you just pushing some kind of accountability, some kind of a uh, association for people to, to if folks gonna do something for you, what can you do? Right. You don't even have to be, like I say again, in monetary, you know, so you just be your time. Mm-hmm. But just making sure people got some skin in the game. And that's what I want to talk about with tonight's show. And this is Deontay Burden. Our show is changing lives, hosted by me, Deontay Burden. Make sure you go to the YouTube channel. Like, share, and subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. Please, please, please. We, I think we're up at, uh, look at it, 1,700 subscribers. Yeah, 1,700. Man, yeah. what the hell going on there? 
So it's all good. Keep chopping wood, baby. Yeah, yeah. I had a goal of two thousand for 2019 to reach 1700 so I reached my goal. As a matter of fact, my what was last week? Was it fifteen? We were at fifteen. It was at yeah. Well, no, that was no, two weeks ago. Fifteen, so we yeah. got to sixteen. Uh-huh. So we getting like a hundred a week. My whole thing is, my goal for the month of September was to reach seventeen hundred. We in week one doing it, man. Hey, so moving along, hey, man. man, keep doing what y'all doing and everything. Telling your friends about it and stuff like that. So I, I super appreciate the support and everything. So. And again, we just try to push out a lot of good information dealing with finance, entrepreneurship, business, uh, families, parenting, and everything. So I hope you guys are enjoying and appreciative. And anything that you feel that we aren't saying, please, please, you know, let me know. Because again, right now we're streaming on Facebook, Instagram, um, and YouTube, and also you know the podcast is what that list: uh, iTunes, iHeartRadio, newly being on Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, uh, TuneIn, SoundCloud, MixCloud. Yeah, you see how many ways you can hear my voice. <laughs> just, you can't go wrong. That's right. Just Google Deontay Burton. You'll see everything just pop Real up. Real soon, we're going to be on that Pandora. Then we're going to be covered. Oh, man. Come on. <laughs> come on. You can't even dare hide from when you want to get away from me. You find Deontay Burton. <laughs> but uh, we're starting our show again. We'll be discussing, you know, having skin in the game. You know, a lot of times, just starting everything off, you start looking at, okay, why would. Um, people even start thinking about helping other people you know sometimes it may be from a, a standpoint of you know want to help somebody family member something like they see some people um want to get ahead or whatever maybe a job and maybe a certain point in life you want to say let me help this person and stuff and you you know some people just got to open giving heart and don't ask for nothing in return not necessarily something return as far as a compensation but just more so from a, an assist standpoint and everything so a lot of times people do that. A lot of times we have different ways in terms of uh, it may benefit them. It may be uh, something that can benefit both parties. We got different reasons why people assist folks. Right. And part of that you have to decide in the process how how you're going to be how going to go on about it. Is it going to be a partnership, business wise, conversation, whatever? And you may say, "No, nah, I'm just doing this out of kindness of my heart." From that point forward, you got to make the decision, okay, am I cool about the effort I'm about to put in behind this situation, you know, in relation to what I'm not going to get right. and what they need to be doing also to kind of smooth it out. And that's why I think a lot of stuff get tricky because sometimes people aren't really as comfortable opening their mouth for themselves and say, hey, look, if I do this, you got to do that. Right. You know, one of my, uh, he's a, uh, uh, he, he watches our show on YouTube, Coach Will Murray. That's one of my uh, kids' track coach. Okay. Awesome brother. Awesome brother. But he always say, like, you know, if you need, uh, he's kind of like a, a, a carpentry company. Coach Murray, one of the guys, one-stop shop. He can do it all. Okay. But he always tell us, like, look, he'll help any one of us out. He said, the only thing I need you to do is have your ass out there with me. Okay. Okay. You know, yeah, that, that's his rule. Your effort got to match my effort. Yeah, yeah. He ain't even saying, like, I'll charge you. I ain't saying nothing. Get the material and get your ass out of there with me. Okay. That's all. You know, and and that's it. Mm-hmm. If you can't say, no, nah, I ain't got time, shit, he can't do nothing with you. Or, okay. or you're going to get your charge. That's, that's but, hey, you can't do nothing but respect that. Real quick. Real and quick. Uh, uh, some people, like, you know, just can tell you that up front. And some folks just uh, assume, mm-hmm. <laughs> which we don't play them games, that a person going to do right and everything. But. I've just come, like I said, out of life experiences of just saying people got to have some kind of skin in the game. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be a case-by-case case thing with doing it. You know, even I'm thinking about in terms of just sometimes with businesses and stuff, you know, some of the, you know, some of the advantages of maybe forming some kind of partnership or dealing with other people, you know. You know, typically you have two heads better than one. You get an uh, opportunity to get some bright ideas or something like that. You uh, can kind of reduce costs mm-hmm. if you're dealing with something with a group and everything. So that can kind of benefit you out with that and uh even when you want to actually say get funding or capital or something like that it can kind of uh, help you mitigate some of those losses and everything so i think those are even from a business standpoint uh good reasons to try to bring a partner in and everything but then we start talking about okay cool we in this partnership when this thing together what could what could negatively affect it you know if if, if i don't have this person putting some kind of commitment on and uh everyone you know uh 
can make some kind of insane commitment to what they're going to be able to to do with the business. I'm better to do this. I'm be able to do that. I'm better to do you know all this stuff. I got experience. You're like, okay, cool. This guy got a cover. You know, he pretty. You know, you know they're pretty put together. You know, she said a lot of good stuff, so I'm, I'm ready for it. And they can't deliver. Um, when you bring in a person's abilities and all the good stuff that they bring to the table, you also bring all the bad stuff too. Okay. You know, so you bring in their bad luggage in and stuff like that. I never thought of that. Oh shit. <laughs> You just ain't experienced it yet. That what it is. Well, I think what happens to me is, even Talk though I'm bringing me. in good, good, the good stuff, I think a lot of times that the um, bad stuff actually outweighs the good stuff, and it it throws me off. Not all I see is bad because it's it's what they call it, it permeates more. It, it hits me harder. Cause I wasn't ex- maybe I w- well I'm always expecting. I mean, don't even let me lie like that. I'm always expecting. Uh huh. But it just it it's just how I see you now. Yeah. So the good kind of goes away. You could be the best person in the world, but you you may have ten bad. I mean, ten, you know, ten good things and five bad ones, and the bad one is just shining, glowing. It's just glowing bright. Yeah. It, it's it, it most a lot of times it's so traumatized you can't even get past yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and everything like you know, like that bad relationship. You right. still holding on from the past. Right. Can't let it go. And you be like, shit. No, you know, I, I learn. Right. And everything you see it, you know, it's um, it's difficult. It's difficult to recover, bounce back with certain things like that. But I do think it's very critical that no matter what dire situation a person is in, mm-hmm. you got to make sure people have some kind of, you know, uh, attachment or skin. Well, like, look, man, hey, I gotta be, you gotta be accountable for it some way. Mm-hmm. Not just, can you just help me? That's tough, man. Right. That's tough and everything. Because typically, you know, you got somebody that really don't have no skin in the game. Number one, you know, they don't have shit. I mean, they don't have nothing to lose. They ain't got nothing to lose. Right. They got everything to gain. Everything to gain. You know, and that's usually you don't really notice it until after the fact or near, you know, you need deep in it. But that's one of the hardest things. You got nothing to lose. Yeah, then what happens is when you come in and help them out and they don't have anything to lose, you start feeling some type of way because you start to realize that I'm putting forth all this effort. I'm doing everything I can, and he and they or them, they just sit back waiting. And it's like you feel – sometimes you feel used. like Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I've seen that a lot at – you've probably seen it more than me, but I'm just saying on the side of just these being my clients, I've had a lot of producers and managers as clients – for the music industry and a lot of artists just come to the table with their rap name and you see the producer or the manager putting in all this money paying for all this stuff and the artist just got to perform which is a lot don't get me wrong but you know i can go down to five points behind some damn performers <laughs> if we go to full county jail all the hip-hop stars all the right for that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> Uh, there again you have a situation where a person is putting out all this money to get this person exposure uh opportunities and everything so when you do hit payday you know the artist you're saying well i made the songs i did this that and that but you didn't put what no skin in the game you didn't you everything could have been lost you'd have kept it moving i could have been homeless or at one point i was homeless because i put all my money behind your stuff my car wasn't working but now we don't hit pay dirt not saying they're gonna pay you but I'm saying I need to get all my money back and then pay you and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people don't see that no. because they just, like I said, they just see what they're doing on the surface, not necessarily what what's been done for them. And uh, again, you, you, you're talking to people that don't they don't have to be accountable. They don't have to get caught on the carpet about why this wasn't done or why this wasn't and everything like that. And it's very easy to uh, be like that. They um, a lot of times don't never try to learn more either. You know. They don't try to learn more or try to help the situation. Like, look, I know that I got limited contribution to this situation and everything. Hey, let me let me help you out on this. You know, you're doing this, and you know, maybe I can pick up some stuff on another end to kind of help the situation. No, nah, none of that is happening <laughs> whatsoever. whatsoever. You know, so, like I said, that's about one side I've seen of it. And um, depending on your relationship with the person, it can cause a lot of resentment and damage 
relationships because of that. Because another person isn't just pulling their own weight. Right. I don't mean to throw you off, but I'm just checking everything. I'm okay. sorry. Oh, no, no, no. It's good. It's good. We got anybody? They chime. They said anything. Everything's good. We've had a lot of, not a lot. We had some audio issues with the uh, the I Facebook the past. Yeah, I fixed the audio. I listened to the Facebook. It sounds a lot yeah. better now with this other camera. So okay, cool, 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 we cool. We good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had some challenges with the Facebook and the audio and stuff like that. So we just trying to make sure we got, you know, you guys got some uh, good information. Um, also, I didn't even say this, guy. I don't know. I forgot. I was supposed to start streaming from the actual Changing Live Facebook page, and I announced I was going to do it at the beginning of September 1st. But I didn't do a good job promoting it, so I'm going to promote, 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 promote all this week to let everybody know. Make sure you tune in to the Facebook Change of Lives to uh, uh, make sure you're looking, you know, looking at the Change of Lives uh, uh, video stream here Thursday 8 p.m. of the Change of Lives page, not my personal uh, Facebook page. But uh, again, you're watching Change of Lives, hosted by yours truly, Deontay Burden. Please go to the YouTube channel, like, share, and subscribe to it. Uh, I did some video. I did the um, a couple of posts and uh, streams, not streams, uh, uh, stories, because of the on the merchant store. Okay. I've had some of my loyal customers that purchased my shirt. You know, my brothers, you ain't sent nothing, but all the ladies they <laughs> sent their <laughs> pictures back. And if you do purchase anything, send me a picture. I'm not gonna post your your, your face. Right. I just you make sure you know. I do a, a a nice post showing your you, you, you nice sister body or whatever body and everything and that changing lives gear. That's right. Yeah, cause <laughs> hey, I'm telling you right now, you go on, my, you look at my posts and everything uh, on the Facebook, especially the stories on Facebook and Instagram, and I'm getting the pictures in. I ain't even posted half of them yet. Okay. Just folks sending in, you know, doing it. And I really appreciate the support. So make sure when I say that to say, go to the uh, DeontayBurden.com. I have the uh, merchant store set up so you're able to buy all the changing lives gear you want i got shirts in every color possible <laughs> uh crew neck v-neck uh tank tops everything uh, it, bro. <laughs> oh man check it out <laughs> and like i said again i got the pictures up right now with you know you see the ladies wearing ladies Tell you, man, look, you don't want the gucci or the louis you want the poochie <laughs> so you, you need to go get that and like I said, again, I got live examples for you, so just check it out, all the colors possible. So make sure you're looking at my uh, Facebook, Instagram stories. You'll see the pictures. The ladies looking good when they're changing live gifts. So go to DeontayBurden.com. Uh, the website is there. Also, when you go to the website, you will see the link to book me for speaking engagements. And you and can't let the other ladies look better than you, ladies, so y'all might well go and get it too, right? Absolutely, man. <laughs> Come on now. Support your boy. And I appreciate everyone that gave me support. We're going to change the live host by yours truly, Deontay Burton. Tonight we are discussing having skin in the game. And we've talked about, you know, pretty much gave a you know a brief definition in terms of having skin in the games. Well, we looked at that being uh, a person have carrying some kind of risk. So be it money, time, value, or property, and achieving a goal. That's what we're looking at, you know, by definition, uh, having skin in the game. And we went over just a couple scenarios. Uh, some of the pros and cons were actually bringing folks in with not – having the skin in the game, but also some of the disadvantages, unfortunate stuff that happens when you don't have a, when a person, you're in a, a situation with a person that don't have the skin in the game. And uh, now what I want to discuss is how not to get burned, how not to get yourself in a situation where you brought somebody in and next thing you know, they took advantage of you and they walked away and you don't lost everything and they may not even gain nothing, but they definitely didn't lose anything. Or they may have gained a lot of stuff, and you made all the sacrifices. So right now, I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to not get burned in them kind of situations. So the first thing, you know, when you when you get, the first thing to do is, number one, make sure you're upfront and honest with people about the situation. Like, look, this is what we're doing and everything, and have some kind of agreement. Informal, formal, verbal, whatever, have something. You know, put it in writing. Put it on what the song said. Put it on paper. Right. And that old Shirley, C not Shirley Caesar. That's one of the blues songs. That dang, I forgot. Put it on paper. That's one of my favorite blues songs. Uh, I don't know that one, brother. Oh and man, I, I, about say, I about songs. to say Shirley Caesar. But I don't even. I don't, I don't mm -hmm. know the lyrics a lot of times. The you know the the beat that catch it, then I start listening to the lyrics later. So it, I, it don't don't count on me on this one. God, I forgot name, but that's a, a old blues song. Put it on paper. Well, yeah, put it on. Make sure you have that, that agreement solid. You're up front with me. Hey, listen, I'm going to do this, 
and these are my expectations for you. And if you do that, you know, I, this is what I want. This is what, you know, and it may not be monetary or whatever, but you just being straight up with folks. That way that keeps confusion down. There is no gray area. There is nothing where nobody really knows what's going on. Y'all got it. Y'all already talk. And again, we're talking about things you can do to not get burned when you have a situation with people. You know, like I said, we're talking about having skin in the game. Right. So you sign to help somebody and you're going to make this commitment to help that person. This is what the hell I need you to do if I'm going to give myself up, my time, my money, whatever, my knowledge to help you. These are a couple things I need you to do so at the end of the day, if it don't work, I don't feel like a fool. Because right. we can say sometimes, well, I'm going to let God handle it and all that. Damn that. <laughs> God will help him do it. Look at you like that, you dummy. I told you on this one, damn. <laughs> told you, dumb ass. I do it on both. You think God ain't laughing at you? Right. Yeah, I told you what. You know, he'll give you that one. When you get on strike three or four, you like, oh, man, you're what's going listening. on, Julie? You're not listening. <laughs> man, for real. And that's the thing w- with that, man. You got to you, you gotta think. So that's why I say, number one, make sure you be very explicit about what you're looking for and everything. If you do this, and even if you say, I don't want nothing, at least just say it. Get it out there in the open, okay? That's number one. Uh, and then, again, like I say again, uh, number two, the agreement. I combine one and two. The agreement is, you know, put in some kind of form or fashion, written, verbal, or something, where y'all can sit here and just know, okay, that's there. Mm-hmm. You know, just, okay, we, we, this is it. You fine, I'm fine. Okay, cool. Now let's move forward. How Y'all want time frame. I'm going to do this for a month or two. You're going to do this. Everything's cool. We're locked in. This is what it is. So we can move forward. Right. And, again, a lot of times does that stop a person from, Running out on you, or breaking your heart, doing something wrong? No, but it gives you some kind of recourse or whatever. You can say, "Okay, uh, I told you that," and nothing's uh, implied. Right. Because you know, people quick to say, "Well, I thought you were just doing it. I thought shit," and you say, "Well, how can you think that?" Well, honestly, some people, unless you say it, right. they really don't know. That's true. You know, well, I thought you just gave me that five thousand dollars. You know, because we were friends. Hell no, man, you know. <laughs> but unless you tell somebody sometimes, you know, right. you can't imply that everybody understands that, you know, no matter if you say, look, man, it's a loan. Some people think loan men give. I don't know where. I don't know why, but some people do. But you have to let folks know. Be straight up with them and everything. Um, the third thing is, and again, we're talking about things you need to do to not get burned. The third thing is, and I think this is very important, don't. Oh, don't expect have expectations of, of, of people to do something that you know they ain't damn capable of. If a person sit here and say that, look, I, if you help me, I'll be able to pay you back or do certain things for you within the next month or two, mm-hmm. or I'll be able to, you know, you know, get back on my feet. And if you know their asses, they they are on their back. Matter of fact, they standing on their head, and you know they are not going to be in a situation to help you in the next month or so. Don't get in that situation. Right. Don't upset uh, yourself. And, or if you do it, don't go in there with those expectations. Mm-hmm. If you know the person does not have the capacity to help you, or to get themselves back, you know, you know, in, in a better situation, don't don't expect that of them. Because a lot of times people get their feelings hurt because you know expectations they cause. Uh-huh. You know, so we talking about like not getting burned. You know, people having skin in the game. Should you talk to them about your expectations? Absolutely. Even if you see that they, you know, they might be whatever and you just gotta say hey this is what i expect in order for us to do this together you, you need to talk to them about it regardless of how they may be on their back on their head right absolutely uh this this is this is the way deontay feels this is a pooch way of thought once i open the door to say hey lab i need some help mm-hmm. i open the door for any kind of rebuttal or criticism you give because i put my business out there right so if you say no, Poochie, why the hell you work here that why you ain't got no money? Or Poochie, I thought you had already took care of that already. What happened? Mm-hmm. And I can't go. Now nah, I ain't on your business. Look, man, just give me the money. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, hell no. Right. So that's just, now that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. Some people feel like they can go ask people for advice with not having to explain why. Okay. Now, if a person doesn't ask you, they just didn't ask you. They might just, you asked them for it, they gave it to you, or they said no, whatever. But you op- you put yourself in a situation to get criticized or get asked questions once you start asking. Okay. So like you just you know you just asked me you know should you tell a person uh, yeah hell yeah because once you put me in your you put me in your business once you start asking right you know so th- and that's how I feel about 
about that. You know, again, we, you know, we, we start my straight capacity. If you know a person cannot uh, fall through an agreement that they stayed on the front end, don't have expectations for and don't get into an agreement with them with those expectations. That's true. You know, don't don't do that. Um, the fourth thing is a uh, don't need no signs. Don't need no signs. When you see the ship is sinking, more than likely it's gonna go down in the water. <laughs> The clouds are dark gray, a storm is coming. Exactly. You know, um, you eat a lot of greens, you're going to get gas. <laughs> you know, you, you, you know it. Is that true? Huh? Is that true? That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't never heard that before. <laughs> That's a Deontay thing. Well, but listen, <laughs> don't y- when you see certain signs that are like a person is, you know, they – they're saying they're going to do certain things, but you're like, man, this joker, he's supposed to pay me back, man, but his ass ain't start working, you know, or, you know, they're supposed to start paying you back, and you see them uh, riding around with a new car, got new clothes on or something like that, and you supposed to got your money back a week ago. These are your signs. Don't ignore them. Okay. Don't ignore them. Again, we're talking about things you can do to not get burned and making people accountable, having skin in the game. Don't ignore these signs that you see certain things. Like, man, you know, the person said, well, look, man, why you counting my money? I told you I was going to pay you back. We supposed to pay me back already. And I ain't saying me jumping a gun before the time come. I'm saying don't ignore things that are in your face that's answering your question. Because a lot of times we'll sit there and be like, man, I, I hope this dude don't do wrong. I hope this dude don't do wrong. And we all probably been like that, you know. Right. You're talking to a person that bills like 30, 45 days at a time. Like, man, they can't come pay me. Some <laughs> stuff you might get up front. Some stuff you might get half or deposit or whatever. Something you just waiting, you know, for your invoice to come back paid or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you hear a person calling you, you see certain things, you're like, I ain't, man, I ain't even paid my money back. <laughs> and, <laughs> but they moving on with life and riding right. and everything, you know. Right, right. You see the post on Facebook, caption, living my best life. <laughs> and you ain't got your damn money. That's true. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, you see these signs, like, you know, you got like, hey, bro. Yeah, yeah, nice car. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a good deal and everything, bro. You got to talk about paying me back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. As soon as I get the next refer payment, ow. Uh, and it happens all the time. Right. But we, uh, people put themselves in situations where they knew better. Or if you didn't know better, you didn't have an idea, once you see the sign, you just kind of like, I don't want to come at them wrong. You can't come, you can't come at people wrong when no it's concerning your stuff. Wrong. Nah. Especially when it's about your effort that you've put into something that they want to do. Absolutely. 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 And um, the fifth thing, what I'm talking about in terms of things you can do to not get burned, have those contingency plans set up. Have your, along with your plan, uh, uh, not just even a plan B, we're talking about a C, D, and E. Whereas when people do certain things, we're talking about avoid getting burned. Uh, when people do certain things to you that can adversely affect you, you have to be prepared because you don't want people to quit. You don't want people to walk away. You don't want people to steal from you. You don't want people to abandon projects when you've made a big monetary or time commitment. But what? It happens. That's why we got something called insurance. Mm-hmm. You know, to kind of mitigate those losses, the things that are unforeseen. And you just have to have those contingency or backup plans in place for that to happen. You know, are you going to have everything covered? No. But I think you can hedge your risk out a lot by making sure you got things in place to kind of to to mitigate those losses or kind of lessen the blow of those losses. So I, I, that's the fifth thing. I really do think you, you should always have those contingency plans. Like again, your plan B, C, D, or E. You know the depth of the, is, the situation, how, how much you need to kind of cover it, or the different scenarios around it. But I think those would be the best things. So uh, just as always, remember, guys, we uh always post the outline of the show so i make sure i have those five tips to uh make sure you don't get burned and make sure people have some kind of skin in the game uh, on the uh youtube channel uh, included with the outline but that's why i want you guys to make sure we put a lot of good information out there you're subscribed to the youtube channel check out we have over 100 videos posted over 100 videos posted i think of 40 at least 40 some shows like another 50 or 60 something um these one to to 10 minute videos 
it's a world of information on the uh, the YouTube channel. So I need you guys to make sure if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, tell your family and friends and everything. Subscribe well. Say that little show a bald head dude. He know a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's happening? Aunt? What's going on, brother? Man, that man. Yeah, you know, but I, I I just um I hope the information helped you guys in regards to having skin in the game. Because a lot of time when we bring ourselves in a situation to help people and we say out of kind of so hard, look, I'm gonna help you brother, I'm gonna help you sister. And people don't have some kind of uh commitment. Say we're talking about the time, the money, that whatever. It's easy for folks to walk away. Mm-hmm. Everybody's not a big integrity person. And I will say probably most people ain't. Right. And not that necessarily people want to uh, do you wrong or get over on you, but everybody ain't going to just sit here and be a stand-up person and take a loss knowing that they're about to take a loss even if it's at your expense. Not that they tried to make you do it, right. but they just say, man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean for that to happen. Right. Instead of just saying, no, nah, look here, I'm going to go. I'm gonna get burned with you. Mm-hmm. They'll get out of it and everything. So that's why I really want to talk about in this show is you got to make people accountable yeah. you got to make people you know hey listen you know own up for certain things because everybody ain't gonna do that yeah. that's why I will, you know when you know talk about the nice show having skin in the game so i hope you guys in, enjoy the information we uh, provided uh in regards to it but make sure you get a chance go to the youtube channel look at the outline have those all the information we already went over so far we're well, going into the tip this is something i wanted to uh, discuss because I think a lot of people don't do this until they have to do it. And when you do it, when you have to do it, you can't remember half this shit. Okay? This is... <laughs> I'm <good>. This is... <laughs> everyone is. Uh, okay. Everyone is. Until something bad happened at your job, uh-huh. or, you know, you you, you know you, you ready to just leave, you are up for a promotion, you're looking for new work, or whatever you got... Uh, or maybe get in an invitation to a certain organization, you don't do this. And what I'm talking about is reviewing your resume or bio at least twice a year. Mm. At least twice a year. Most folks don't do it. You know, I got a, uh, one of my best friends, he's the HR director. That nerd does it every other month. Really? You know, he, yeah, he's a, damn, <laughs> he's a damn mess. Yeah, but you need to make sure you're always on top of that. You got to see his resume. It's like some shit, man. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> yeah, he, 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 my every toilet he scrubbed and everything. Really? Yeah, I'm gonna, let me get out my butt. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I've heard that it, you can put too much information on there. You just keep adding and adding and adding stuff. It depends on the job. Okay. It depends on the job. Some 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 things you depending on what you're trying to do, you need to show it be a detail or possible. Some some resumes you need to show results. Because some positions are uh, uh, result driven. Some they just need to be stated facts. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can't. I mean, if you look and just get your job in the warehouse, I mean, they don't need to know all the other warehouses. They just need to know you did a forklift or can you do this? Maybe, right. you know, you just said that from the previous warehouse. But if it's something that's uh, pretty detailed, mm-hmm. the job, they probably want to, you know, and I, and I think it's case by case. So it is a situation you can have a one page or a two or three. Right. But even with the bio, a lot of times what happens, man, you get in a situation, you can't recall half of that shit. And then when you put it down on your resume, and it's been a while, you didn't put down the true, the true girth of the value of what should have been put on there. You'll put on there like, you know, I, uh, I processed orders mm-hmm. instead of saying I process these kind of orders and this, that, and that. While this value at a certain amount of time, that you know increase production by all that kind of stuff. You just put down the the, the, the yeah the basic, and if you kind of have some kind of system in place. Monthly, quarterly, at least twice a year. I think you better recall it a lot better. Just looking at it and kind of just revamping it, the resume and your bio. So, you know, that's the kind of tip. I, that's the tip I wanted to kind of shed on everybody. Try to revisit that resume or bio at least twice a year. Okay. You know, because again, you know, when you do when you have to, you ain't gonna remember half of that shit. <laughs> I have a good story. My job uh-huh. a few years back. <laughs> say six, seven, eight years back. My job actually closed up, so they laid all of us off. So I wasn't expecting to be laid off. So I did my resume real quick. Man, when I tell you, that was the worst resume I ever did. Because <laughs> I, I, I'm rushing, I'm rushing trying to find something else. So my mind is spinning because I'm thinking like, okay, 
I got this amount of money saved for this amount of time. I need to be working by this by this day. You know, you when you have down to the time, the hour of the day, the hour of the second mm-hmm. of when you need to start working. So yeah. I'm rushing through to get this out because I have been working at that job almost ten years. Yeah. So it was no I didn't need really need a resume, so I hadn't reviewed it. Exactly. So when it, when they start laying us off, I hadn't reviewed my resume, so I'm looking at stuff that's like that is irrelevant, you know, yeah. to what I'm, you know, to what I'm trying to do. Uh-huh. So I basically had to go in, reword a lot of stuff, and rechange some stuff. But what the problem was is that usually I do very good. I keep a dictionary next to me, and mm-hmm. I usually check the words or check the spelling stuff. I didn't do it this time, mm-hmm. so I had a few words in there that was misspelled. How did you get a product to the street? Exactly. <laughs> You know, you, you know, you know. It's funny what you just said. Like, it was two things that I think are very important points about what we're talking about. The first thing is psychologically, it's always easier to get a job when you don't have a job. Exactly. I mean, when you have a job, it's easy to get uh, look for a job. So, like you just said, I had the, uh, uh I didn't have any no pressure because I'm working a job. You know, how long you said was? Uh, ten years. Ten years. Ten years. Like you, you can easily, you know, even what we're talking about updating the resume, you don't have no pressure on it doing it and everything mm-hmm. because. When you had that pressure, again, you just putting stuff down and proofreading and nothing like that. Yeah. When you when you when, when, when you are when I said when you I'm sorry when you had pressure on you, that's kind of stuff happened. When you don't have any pressure, you can sit down, maybe you know, go in the dictionary, look at some different words and stuff like that, and you know, it's not pressing you. The other thing is, um, you said because I was working there, I didn't have to. That's what we got to get out exactly. of. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Cuz you are not going to get fired when you want to be fired. <laughs> so That's exactly the point. The the the, the sense of urgency ain't there. Understandably cuz when you comfortable with a good company, we all been, you know, part of that. That's just how it is. Excuse me, but we can't be that way. So with that said, we got to make sure we we never look at it like, you know, I'm working so long I don't need to do it. Shit, you have to do it. Because, again, it's not going to happen when you're ready for it. And you're not going to be able to recall it to the va- to really give your true value when you're stressing. Because yeah. when you're stressing, you, of course, you, it's hard to remember, but you got so much other stuff. Got to get work. Got to get it. It's got to do that. And like you said, I'm, I got by this day, I got to have it. But this day, I got to have it. You worry about so much other stuff, you ain't even really getting the, the full details to recall like you would with a clear mind. So kind of make sure we stand on top of that. So that's our tip for this week you know make sure we do some kind of systematic uh review of your resume or your bio um in concluding tonight's uh show what i want to tell everybody is um don't be so damn smart you try to think yourself a lot of times you know we're talking about having a skin in the game again this is change the lives hosted by yours truly deontay burden make sure you go to the youtube channel change the lives hosted by yours truly deontay burden like share subscribe to it also visit DeontayBurden.com uh, with the finance series. You can go to the uh, in, uh, go to www.majesticbiz.com, Majestic Business Services. Uh, book an appointment for one of our consulting uh, appointments because we have the uh, we brought out the finance entrepreneur finance and business one on one series this month, uh, starting it out this month and everything. But in conclusion, like I said, don't let your your, your, your heart outweigh your brain or I think your brain because when we see certain things happening we know something wrong and you sit here and fight it and everything and you know that hey somebody's mistreating you, using you doing you in a certain way and um, we try to keep a distance with stuff and because we don't want to hurt folks feelings or sometimes we don't want to really believe somebody's doing us wrong because we're close to them but our mind's like, no, nah, you see this shit. But your heart is telling you, no, nah, I, I really don't see it. Your mind, your mind see black and white. Your heart see gray. And you got to really get out of that because people hurt your ass. Because yeah. they know your ass, you ain't going to be a certain way, especially if you're a good person. So you got to be smarter than that. So I just want to include and give everyone that advice to make sure you use your mind. You use your heart. You can use your heart and, you know, part of the decision but don't let it i think that mind of yours because your mind is you know calibrated by all the things you're going to do in the future but most important all the stuff you did in the past that you've learned from and once you start skipping over what your mind is telling you through experiences 
that's when we keep making the same mistakes over and over and over again and we don't want to do that because when you start making mistakes over and over and over again it's going to come to a point that you may not necessarily be recovered from some of them and we don't want to play around like that you know we've been talking about just skinning the game everybody gonna have different kind of commitment levels and you gotta have enough sense to know like look this person ain't gonna do right i need to move on that's right so i hope the information we put out tonight uh having skin in the game helped you guys out and i'm just re re uh rehash everything make sure you go to the youtube channel like share and subscribe to the videos change the live host by your truly deontay burden please go there and check out the uh the new finance one-on-one series uh we're going to a lot of good business advice finance advice uh business financial statements and financial ratio advice a lot of stuff we're taking from a business entrepreneur or finance perspective and explain it to you in english <laughs> so i think that'll help a lot of you guys out um with doing it you know it's not like you're talking to you're talking to an expert but they're trying to you know make sure it's, it's in a a way that anyone can understand um if you want to actually uh book me for a speaking event or you want to get some of that hot 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 changing lives gear make sure you go to deontayburden.com that's d-e-o-n-t-e Last name Burden, B U R D E N, Deontay Burden.com. Book me for a speaking event. We got the merchandise store there. You can go in there and buy you some nice gear and stuff. Go to my Facebook or the Instagram page and the stories. We got some of the pictures of some of the ladies looking good wearing some of that Changing Lives gear. Make sure you get some. Fellas, if you see the ladies in that stuff, ain't going to make you want to do one thing. Get your woman one. <laughs> get your woman one. Exactly. Okay, so make sure you guys do that. And also with the uh, uh, the information we're giving out in the financial series, where um, if you want to book an appointment, discuss any of that information further, make sure you go to uh, my company, Majestic Business Services. We're the, uh, on the web at www.majesticbiz.com. Scroll down. You can, we, have pay, we have one-stop shop, small businesses, bookkeeping, tax prep, payroll, consulting. Anything you need, you can hit it, book an appointment. The schedule is there. Lock in appointment if you want to, you know, for anything you want, any question you got, um, hit us up. We'll be able to take care of you. Again, I appreciate our support, everyone. Keep your fingers crossed for me and my team this Saturday morning. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Love you guys. Take care.